Uh, thank you very much, Amar. Thanks, Anil, for the invitation. It's a really pleasure and honor to be here. I am an anesthesiologist. I've been working with Dr. Gordon Ranowitz for about 20 years. And um, this is uh, my seventh time in India. Um, last year, I brought my wife and my three daughters uh, because it's a wonderful country and we really enjoy it. I'm going to be talking today about uh, motor blocks. Uh, how, how do you go back? How do you go back? There we go. Uh, motor blocks, specifically about a doctor canal and IPAC. Most of you know the doctor canal. Most of you don't know the IPAC. I will mention something about the catheters also. I have no disclosures. We all know total knee replacement is very painful. What are our goals today for uh, knee, knee, uh, controlling the pain? Obviously, it's the main, main reason. But not only controlling the pain, also controlling the side effects. And mainly controlling the motor block. We cannot have a patient after the surgery that cannot walk because it has a weakness in the, in the, in the quadriceps. So it is very important to have the patient controlling the pain but having the patient free to walk the same day and the next day after the, after the surgery. Obviously, the patient satisfaction and is very important for a goal for total knee replacement today decrease the incidence of chronic pain. It's an epidemia in America about chronic pain and uh, addiction. How do we achieve these goals? Obviously, periarticular injection, Harish is going to talk about that after this, and adductor canal blocks and IPAC. Those are the two main blocks I will be talking about. What is the adductor canal? It's the block that replaces the femoral block. The same analgesia, but no motor block. The same for the IPAC. The IPAC is the same analgesia as the sciatic nerve block, but no motor block. And we have a, a tremendous amount of focus in, in re rehabbing the patient the same day after surgery. The adductor canal block came to HSS about 2006. It's been a total success since then. In the beginning, we used to call saphenous nerve block, and we realized that we're not only blocking the saphenous nerve, but also blocking the vastus medialis nerve, some branches of the obturator nerve, and the femoral cutaneous nerve. So that's why this block has a great analgesia. We're starting to do this block. We get very enthusiastic, and we start investigating. And we ask the question, is really this block has equal analgesia as the femoral block. And we studied, we published this uh, in, in the anesthesia literature in 2014. And basically, we proved the primary outcome. These patients, they do have the same analgesia. This saphenous block, a doctor canal block, has the same analgesia as the femoral block, but has no motor block if you compare to the femoral block, as you can see in this table on the uh, uh, highlighting green. The, we create this dynamometer, which is measuring the uh, length, the, the strength of the quadriceps, and we proved, actually, that the femoral block has motor block and the adductor canal block has no motor block. We get very enthusiastic about it and say, can we compare to another treatments? So the periarticular injections came in to HSS, and we add the adductor canal block to the periarticular injections. Uh, we study this. Uh, this is a study actually which just uh, accepted for publication in the orthopedic literature, JBJS, and it's going to be published in the next couple of months. Um, what I did in this study is just I put together a team of physical therapists, orthopedic surgeons, and anesthesiologists, and we were looking for can we add the adductor canal black to periarticular injections, and we can, can we show, show that there is an improvement in terms of uh, time for the patients to be ready to discharge? Obviously, the, uh, the, the classical uh, um, uh, nausea, vomiting, and uh, opiate consumption also was included. And the result for this study was that if you add the adductor canal to the periarticular injection, the time of discharge is the same in both groups. There's no difference. But what the difference was, very importantly, is that the time that the patients were ready to discharge, 
is half of the time that we had at HSS at that, at that moment. At that, at that time, in 2013, the time of this chart was about 62 hours. And with this study, we brought that down to 30 hours, 32 hours. That was a very important component on this study. And we also show that there is some difference in terms of pain uh, favoring the ductal canal block. So the conclusion of the study was that there was no difference in terms of time of discharge, but was difference in terms of the, uh, the pain uh, uh, in, the, in all the categories. It's a very simple block to do. I'm not going to teach you how to do the block, just to show you that there is um, ultrasound guidance. We do this block and the ultrasound in the operating room before the surgery. Uh, does not need a learning curve. It's very easy to do. With the ultrasound, you can visualize the femoral artery, you can visualize the sartorius, and you visualize the needle. The IPAC is the second block. We had this IPAC, we came in 2014 to us. Uh, it was very, uh, the surgeons really liked it right away uh, because it blocks the posterior capsule of the knee. So the patients are allowed to be on extension. I uh, apologize, I'm going to keep two more minutes, Amar. As I said to you. <laughs> um, so we are all very excited about it, and we decided to study also this. And this is was published in the anesthesia literature. Uh, we just published in September last year. So we add to the periarticular injection the adductor canal and the IPAC. The primary outcome was pain the first day after surgery. And we clearly show that this technique, the periarticular injection plus the adductor canal plus the IPAC, was superior to the periarticular injection alone in terms of pain with movement, pain at rest on the day of surgery and on the day after the surgery. Again, it's a very simple block to do, doesn't require uh, much learning curve. The patients are in the supine position. The, the knee is bent, frog position of the, of the patient. The, the probe is placed under the, the knee and the ultrasound is visualized the popliteal artery and the femoral, um, the femur. The needle goes parallel, close to the femur to avoid the sciatic nerve. At this level is the tibial nerve that is close to us. The local anesthetic is infiltrated, usually 15 to 20 ml of bupivacaine, quarter percent with dexamethasone to prolong the block. And the last topic that I'm talking about is what happened after this medication wears off 24 to 36 hours later is a rebound pain. Most of the patients, they already have multimodal analgesia. They have some narcotics on board, so the patient is not that bad. But some of the patients, they do have that rebound pain. So what do we do for that? it has been a lot of investigation about this. One of the possibilities is doing a catheterist, placing a, a ductal canal catheter to prolong the analgesia for another couple of days. Some of the hospitals in the U.S., especially Virginia Mason Clinic, has a, a very a well, well known program, and they are sending patients home after total knee replacement with these catheters. So, we do have a study right now at HSS. We just started to enroll the patients, and we need, we have the results probably next year, and we'll talk about that if I'm here next one. So in summary, analgesia for total knee replacement, peripheral nerve blocks, IPAC, and a ductal canal, the periarticular injections, and the multimodal analgesia.